Hey guys, it's AC. Welcome to my house. And today we're going to talk about why real estate developers are evil. <laughs> they are the worst things ever. They tear down perfectly fine houses and they build mansions. And why do they do this? They just ruin neighborhood after neighborhood. At least that's what I read on the Facebook pages of every neighborhood group that's in a desirable neighborhood possibly going under gentrification or there's improvements going all around them. But why is this? Why do developers have to knock down a perfectly good home to build a giant new home? Well, you know, I like looking at it in a spreadsheet. So let's have a look. Okay, so this is a recent one in my hometown. Um, this was a perfectly fine livable home, two bedroom, one bath. You can kind of see it's already sort of flanked by two larger homes and that's okay. I really like diverse housing in neighborhoods. I think it adds to the community. You have different socioeconomic residents who may work at the local coffee shop or auto repair store, whatever sort of is the servicing industries in your community. What happens in they're all million dollar mansions being built well, the people who still work at those coffee houses and auto repair shops, well, now they don't live in your neighborhood and they have to drive in. And when driving in, it creates more traffic. It takes up the parking spot. They don't feel like they're part of the community. You don't see your neighbors when you walk down the street. It's this big effect that happens over and over again when you tear down these small homes. Why don't developers get that? That they're really ripping apart the neighborhood by doing this. So this house, like I said, recently sold in my neighborhood for $370,000. It was $378,000 with $8,000 closing costs back. Let's call it $370,000. And when I click through the photos, it's a great home, you know, livable kitchen and not a whole lot of work maybe that needed to be done. It's moving ready. Possibly you could update it if you wanted to. Nice little back porch and a decent yard great home doesn't need to be torn down now what's great about this home and i i visited this so i knew that there was a little apartment down here it wasn't renovated it was it could be used as a duplex an airbnb a mother-in-law suite um it's see if there's some photos here i think this is still upstairs but when we go downstairs yeah there's some recording re equipment that's the door that goes outside um not bad. They had a little kitchenette or at least a sink in there, an extra broom. Um, you could easily put a little kitchenette there and make it a duplex, which obviously I love. And that's house hacking where you live in one unit, you rent out your second unit, you make some money, they cover out, cover your mortgage. It's a great way to get real estate investing. But this, this video is all about how terrible real estate developers are. So let's analyze the numbers here now i know this market well i'm a real estate agent in this neighborhood i live in this neighborhood so i know sort of what developers could do so with our developer hat on or home renovator or real estate investor hat on we look at this property and say three hundred and seventy thousand dollars. great i could live there two bedrooms one bath and i can make it work for me but i want it a little bit more updated and I'd love to keep it as a duplex, maybe finish off that duplex. There is a sink down there in plumbing, so it wouldn't be hard to add a shower and maybe a toilet. Um, and there's that extra room we can make into a kitchenette. So let's assume our renovation budget is $50,000. With that $50,000, maybe we put $35,000 upstairs getting that um, livable for a primary occupant. And then maybe we put $15,000 it might be a little bit more to kind of squeeze it out to make that a livable apartment of some sort. Um, and one thing to consider though, is if you do a major renovation, you're gonna to have to get permits. Now this is zoned single family, even though it was illegally used as a duplex beforehand, I can maybe keep it as an illegal duplex, but if I file permits and I'm doing a renovation of over $50,000, well, I have to comply with local zoning, which tells me it's a single family. So I'm gonna do this under the radar. I'm just gonna keep the budget at $50,000, maybe 49,000 and try to do it without permits. And I'm not changing the footprint. Maybe I can get some 
construction workers and on the weekend or sort of working under the radar to get this flipped without permits if that's how I've determined the best use of this property is to maximize my returns. Now, after coming to that conclusion, I have to figure out what my ARV is. ARV stands for after rehab value, what it's worth after I renovate it or rehab it or repair it after repair value. These are all sort of the acronyms for ARV. It's basically what it's worth after the renovation's done. Now, I know this area really well, so if you kept the same square footage and you got it fixed up, where there's two bedroom, one bath up top, and one bedroom, one bath downstairs, your ARV would be about $425,000. And, well, that profit is obviously not very much. We make $5,000. So a developer coming in here or a house flipper or a home renovator or some homeowner who wants to occupy it and renovate it, they're going to look at these numbers and say, it's not worth my effort. I'm only gonna make $5,000, but I'm gonna to have to spend three months, maybe longer, um, and worrying about doing this without permits, getting it under the radar. I'm only gonna make $5,000. Now, it's not bad. $5,000 is better than losing $5,000, but there's not a whole lot of wiggle room. Every renovation, there are gonna be surprises and delays. So that $5,000 is gonna be really tight. I can maybe justify it if it's someone who's not doing this specifically for a profit that they're going to sell to someone else. But if they really love this location and they want to live in the area and that house specifically, see a way to make ends meet by house hacking and renting out that bottom unit and they'll cover some of the mortgage. Maybe that buyer, it makes sense. So that is how a real estate investor would run the math here. And they might say, I'm going to pass. I'm not going to offer 370 on that house. So. What would be the next step that a real estate investor could do to maximize the value of this home? Well, it would be, hey, forget about the duplex. I want to file permits. I want to do the renovation properly. I want to make this a great single family house. I don't have a huge budget. I sort of want to cater to the lower income portion of this neighborhood. Not that a $370,000 house is lower income, but compared to the houses around it, it's about a third of the price. So. Let's turn this into a single family. Maybe that duplex we get rid of and we just make it a great basement. We put a little bit of extra money and we file the permits. What do the numbers look like in that situation? Well, if we still buy this property for $370,000 and we put a little bit more into turning this from a two family to a single family, well, that's a $60,000 renovation budget. Now, remember, we're also taking away two lower income people out of the community because we've turned this in from a duplex into a single family. So instead of two rental units, someone who's maybe renting for $1,000, $1,500, and maybe they're living upstairs or renting upstairs for $1,500 to $2,000 after this is renovated, which was situation one, we're now saying, uh, someone's got to move. Someone's got to leave our neighborhood. And we're going to turn this into a single family because this makes more sense for me. So ARV in this situation is $450,000. So we spent 10,000 more than we did on a duplex and we made $25,000 more. So that's not too bad. We're making more money, but we are kicking someone out theoretically. This two family house that could be used for a purpose is now a single family house to someone who's a little bit wealthier and needs the whole house to themselves. And that creates a profit of $20,000. Now, some people might say, wow, okay, this is getting interesting. I might buy this house to flip, but I'm gonna to have to spend $60,000 plus probably 20% down, if not 25% on a $370,000 house. You're looking at a $100,000 investment to make $20,000. That's a 20% return on your money, but there's still gonna be some risk and there's not a whole lot of meat on the bone if things go sideways you might find a buyer at that situation and it might make sense for them. And again, this could also be the buyer who wants to live in the home and they just customize it themselves. And that's great for them. They're not looking at it as a real estate investment. They're looking at it as a primary residence purchase. Well, what would be the next step that a real estate investor would do? Well, that would be to add square footage. Why don't we make it a little bit bigger? right? We can maybe do an addition off the back and that addition might have a second story as well. Um, and so we can kind of just make a bigger home, but it doesn't need to be a make mansion. It doesn't need to be giant. It doesn't need to be 4,000, 5,000 square feet. Why don't we take this 1,200 square foot home and turn it into a 2,500 square foot home? Seems somewhat reasonable, but not as big as the houses next door. 
Let's see what the numbers look like in that situation. So with an addition off the back, we really have to up the budget to $150,000. An extra $90,000 for labor and materials, the square footage. So we we're going to want to get a better return. Well, the ARV or the after repair value, after I do all this work, I only have a $550,000 house. I spent $90,000 more to make $10,000 extra dollars. That's not gonna be worth my effort or time at all. But let's say we get lucky and we hit a home run and it's $580,000 ARV. Well, I made $60,000, but again, I probably had to invest over $200,000 to make $60,000, which may work from some house flippers. If you got a crew and you can get in and you can get out quickly and you're not spending a lot of money on this mortgage payment that you gotta hit every single month, there's probably a high interest rate because it's a renovation loan, this may work for you. These numbers may work for you. Now, what would an evil real estate developer do? And why would a real estate developer want to buy this house and tear it down? Well, the way this house is priced at $370,000, there's not a lot else they can do but maybe tear it down and build brand new. And let's look at the numbers there. So if you buy the house for $370,000, and let's say you have a renovation budget of $600,000, and we'll put an extra 30 in here in the spreadsheet because this is gonna be a more expensive loan, you're doing new construction, you're tearing it down, instead of something that takes three months or six months, this might take nine months to a year, so it's gonna be a little bit more expensive, so I buffered that to call it $630,000 instead of a $600,000 budget. So effectively, this is a million dollar investment, right? Well, the ARV is really gonna determine whether this is a good value. What we know is if we just do a smaller renovation, we make $60,000. But what if we look at the zoning, which says this has to be single family if I do a major renovation, it says I have to build a single family based on the zoning if I'm building new construction. The real estate developer looks at this and says, let me just figure out how much money I can make if I build the maximum size house as possible. Well, again, I know this market really well, and I would say if you could build the maximum size house on this lot, you could probably get 1.175 for this. And if you hit that number, you made $175,000 in profit. And all it took was three extra months. Maybe it took six extra months, but look it, you or tripling your return. So a real estate developer would buy this, right? The seller of the property couldn't sell it to someone who wants to keep it in its current shape because then for the numbers to make sense, they would have had to sell it probably for $300,000 to a smaller renovator with a smaller budget to keep the house as a smaller footprint. They would have to maybe sell the house for 325 for the numbers to work, maybe 340 if they wanted it to stay in the same footprint and turn into a single family. But we all want what's best for the seller, right? We always want the seller, the little guy, to sell the house as much money as they possibly can. Well, that is to be selling it in this situation to a new construction developer because that's the person who's going to pay top dollar at $370,000 because they can make the numbers work by tearing it down, following the local zoning, maximizing what's allowed there, the rules already say this is what you can build. They're not trying to change the rules. They're just trying to follow the rules and maximize their investment. And well, they get a handsome return. They make $175,000. Now let me be completely transparent. I know these numbers inside and out because this was my property. I was the evil developer on this property and I ran through this scenario. You can look down here. I, Alan Corey, was the agent who bought this property three days on the market back in 2018. My sales price was $378,000 with $8,000 off in closing costs back. So basically a $370,000 investment. And I was trying to figure out what would be best for this neighborhood, what would work, what also makes sense for my business. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time building this. And well, this is what I came up with, which was this design. And yes, it's the evil developer design. Knock it down, build everything new construction. And guess what? I listed it for 1.175 and it sold for 1.175 before I even finished building it. So my numbers were right. And I was that evil developer. And this is what this house looks like today. It's 
I think a beautiful home, it fits in, it matches the other larger homes on either side of it. But am I a bad developer? So I don't think I'm the evil developer, obviously, but other people do. The neighbors might think I'm an evil developer, but the way I look at it is no one else was gonna buy this property except a developer the way it was priced. In part two, I was just following the rules. The rules say I can build a house up to this size. So I'm going to do it. I'm not trying to do anything illegal. But three, I think the zoning rules need to change. That is who the bad guy is. If the zoning give tax breaks to developers to build a duplex or a triplex or a quadruplex or some other high density housing, I bet you every single developer would do it. They're just gonna go the path that makes them the most money. But time and time again, developers are incentivized to build million dollar homes. This needs to change. We need to want to have high density housing in our neighborhoods, high density housing, quads and duplexes and triplexes on our street instead of every home being single family because this is the problem it creates. It creates kicking out a lower income individual in order to build a million dollar house that attracts a wealthier individual. And the lower income person gets displaced from neighborhood after neighborhood and after neighborhood. Now I could be completely altruistic and build and renovate properties and keep this a duplex all day and lose money. I can only do that for one project maybe. I can't do that as a career. So I wanna have to build some single families to pay for the altruistic projects. And I wanna tell you, not very many developers work in that model. So. If you hate your evil developer, if you see those evil developer comments on your neighborhood Facebook page, take a step back and say, listen, that seller sold it to top dollar to a developer. So that seller got the most that they could for their money. Two, the developer is following the rules and the laws. They're not doing anything crazy. If you don't want a house that big, go to the zoning board and have them say you can't build a house that big. But if you really, really want to make change, go to the zoning board and say, I want to allow high density housing in my neighborhood. It makes for a better community. That is how we get rid of evil real estate developers. So there you have it. That's my take on real estate development, why it exists and why the NIMBYs, not in my backyard type of people, don't really understand how real estate developers calculate their math or why they choose to build giant projects. There you have it. Thanks for listening to the House of AC. Please read my book, House Fire, or the Subversive Job Search, or A Million Bucks by 30. I got three books there. I bet you will like one of them. Also, I bet you like this video. So hit like button right now, right here, and subscribe. I would appreciate it. And I'll see you next time on the House of AC. Goodbye.